This was a very difficult video to make. There was a lot of boring testing going on, but I'm very happy that I did it. This was exactly the closure that I needed because now I can finally stop talking about Nintendo Switch docks. Today, we're gonna be looking at four different Switch docks plus portable mode and see how they all handle four different video games of varying graphical power and what the Switch is doing internally to provide itself power for these processes. There's a lot of numbers and graphs in this video and I try to keep it as short as possible, but the TLDR is that, sure, you could use a third party Switch dock or charger, just make sure you never put your Switch to sleep. I like to think of this as sort of a baking soda volcano science experiment. In my last video, I talked about why I still think that aftermarket Nintendo Switch docks and chargers are bad, and I still feel that way, but I wanted to prove once and for all why exactly they're bad. Because, you know, they're not all killing Switches out there, but they've been known to. So, again, why are we risking it? This is something you can do at home with about $60 worth of equipment from Amazon. What you'll need is a watt meter to read what the switch is drawing from the outlet. You'll need a USB-C vault meter to see what the switch is drawing in from the dock or charger. And you'll need a USB-C extension cable because you will not be able to fit the vault meter into a switch dock without it. This equipment is relatively cheap, and because of that, we should be taking the readings that we get from them with a grain of salt. There's probably gonna be some slight variance. We're really looking for obvious differences in power consumption. I should also note that I don't know what the f I'm doing. I'm an amateur that's kind of made this an obsession of mine. I've never done anything like this before. Again, I'm really just looking for major differences in power consumption across all of these different docks. If these aftermarket docks are as good as their manufacturers claim them to be, then they should provide the same amount of power in the same way that the official Nintendo stuff does, right? If you haven't seen my last video, you should do that. But the hypothesis is that the official Nintendo dock delivers power all weird, and the Switch doesn't exactly comply with USB power delivery standards. But every aftermarket company thinks that if they comply with these USB power delivery standards, everything will be just fine. So let's see if that's true. For these tests, I measured the watts being pulled out of the outlet, the volts being pushed into the Switch, the amps being pulled into the Switch, the amps coming out of the outlet sometimes, because I sometimes honestly forgot to get those readings. Oopsies. I ran these tests in portable mode with the Nintendo dock, the Insignia dock, the Dongi dock, and some random dongle that probably doesn't even have USB PD. On each of these, I tested asleep with a full charge, idling on the home screen, playing Animal Crossing, playing Breath of the Wild, NES, Super Mario, and Doom. These were chosen for their varying degrees of graphical fidelity and efficiency. I did test the Switch charging the battery in portable mode, but I didn't do that for all docks because that would have taken forever and this video's already taken forever. You do it. You get all the stuff and do it yourself. The Switch draws more power based on what's happening on screen or in the game. So a game like Doom is really heavy on power consumption. It draws significantly more power than a game like Breath of the Wild or Animal Crossing, which, believe it or not, draw relatively the same amount of power. Mario on the NES draws way less power than all the others, which shouldn't be a surprise. It's extremely power efficient. What was surprising was that there were spikes in power consumption during deaths, which I only did for science. I've never died in a Mario game before. Only willingly and for science. Breath of the Wild draws more power when there's a lot of enemies on screen or when there's a big enemy. And Doom draws more power when there's more enemies, but even more power when there's glory kills or first person animations. All of these games draw less power when you're in a menu, which is to be expected. All of this is to be expected. The Switch draws more power when it's docked than it does in portable mode, which 
also should be expected. In most cases, it's outputting higher resolution video. The dock itself provides no graphical improvement to the Switch. It just helps the Switch consume more power because it doesn't have to rely on the battery. This is also why it's unlikely we'll ever see a 4K capable Switch dock. Sure, there's USB-C GPUs out there, but do you really think Nintendo would do that? The company that released basically the same console two generations in a row and then broke sales records with it? Now, what I expected was massive differences in power consumption across all of these different docks. And that's why in science, when there's a hypothesis, they test it out. There were slight differences in power consumption, but nothing that I could confidently say was a problem. It looks as though the aftermarket docks drew slightly more power, but the variance is so slight, it could just be that I didn't do enough testing. Maybe if I played the same part in every game the same exact way 10 times, it would all average out to the same amount of power consumed. I did notice the docked and undocked switch never made it to 15 volts. They only hovered around 14.7 and 14.9. But the Insignia and Dongi docks, the USB PD ones, hit 15 in sleep mode. The Dongi also hit it when idling on the home screen and in NES Mario, which like is basically like sleep mode. That's probably still not enough of a discrepancy to cause your Switch any problems. So honestly, if all you wanna do is pop your Switch into one of these docks to play a game, you're probably safe. It's not gonna damage your Switch. But, but, don't put your Switch to sleep. When sleeping in portable mode and sleeping in the dock with a full battery, the switch will trickle charge 0.03 watts every so often, showing 14.9 volts and zero amps. This is how most electronics handle a full battery. This way you don't ruin your battery. The concerning thing is that none of the aftermarket docks behave this way. They only got as low as pulling 0.8 watts and zero amps. And it took all of these docks much longer on the charger to even get this low. It was speculated that this is what caused the bricking issue on the Nyko dock. Now I have one of those Nyko docks, but I value my Animal Crossing Island way too much to sacrifice my switch in the name of science. I don't necessarily think that this sleep mode issue will be the instant death of your Switch if you have one of these third-party docks or chargers, but it definitely can't be good in the long term, especially if you leave your Switch on the charger with a full battery 24-7 like I do with the stock Nintendo dock. These third-party accessories could be causing damage to your Switch over time because they're not supposed to behave like that. And if you have a third party dock that I maybe didn't specifically cover in this video, it's probably doing the same thing as these other ones. So again, for hopefully the last time, get a motherfucking official Nintendo Switch dock and charger. Now I ain't no expert, but something ain't right here. It's a really bad time right now to get official Nintendo anything, but enable stock alerts on Amazon and frequently check the official Nintendo refurb site. Unless you want to live life on the edge, maybe you don't care if you never see your Animal Crossing villagers again. You'd really do that to Peanut? You're a real piece of garbage, aren't you? But anyway, what do you guys think about this final nail in the coffin on the, uh, these freaking Nintendo Switch docks. Is this enough evidence to prove that something ain't right here? Were you convinced years ago when I first started talking about this stuff? I promise the next video won't be anything like this. I think I'm talking about an emulator anyway. But anyway, did this help you out? Is this interesting at all? Are you happy that we're finally at the end of this? Or do you have more questions about this? And maybe you can make more sense of the actual numbers that I have here in all of these graphs. Leave it in the comment below at me on Twitter, any and all this other social media garbage. Of course, we got new videos and live streams all the time here. Our schedule is usually in a pinned tweet over on our Twitter. And we got Wolfden live every single Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. That's our live podcast. We can talk to each other. So if you want to leave any questions or comments, we can just do it there live. And we got a lot more streams over on twitch.tv slash Wolfden lately. 
Give me a follow there and put the notifications on so you know when I'm live. I might even be live now if you go over there. But of course, the most important things that you can do to help support the channel is just subscribe. That way you know when we get new videos and YouTube will be like, hey, this guy's got new videos for you. And share this video with a friend, a friend who maybe has one of these aftermarket switch docks or is in the market for one, or maybe he only plays stuff in portable mode. Maybe they might be thinking of getting one of these switch docks. Maybe they work at a store like Best Buy and sell these switch docks. Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a very good week. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Don't use third party accessories. Goodbye. Unless they're controllers.